So after having reviewed the Mac Mini M4 base model and having come to the conclusion that it's not sufficient for Adobe Premiere Pro editing, I was very disappointed. But I still wanted to move to Mac, so I decided to buy a very expensive M4 Pro laptop. This one was the most specced out one for the Pro series. That means it comes with 14 core CPU and a 20 core GPU with 48 gigs of memory. I was hoping that this would be better than my PC. Now, in the previous video, I was comparing the Mac Mini with a computer that was made three to four years ago and it costed about 2,000 US dollars, maybe 2,300 US dollars. It was an 11th gen Intel CPU with an RTX 3070 and 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM, which is ancient in today's world. Ultimately, the PC completely smoked the Mac Mini and the Mac Mini was almost unusable, especially for complex timelines. Let's say you have multi-cam up to three different cameras many different codecs like stuff from your Samsung phones that are you know very difficult to render because they use intergop codecs anyways the whole experience on the base Mac M4 Mac mini was just not usable at all so in this video i'm going to be comparing just the M4 Pro against my 3 to 4 year old PC i i think it's a more fair match so here's the spoiler what ended up happening was that the PC and the M4 Pro were pretty much neck and neck tie when it came to performance. I'm talking about things like Premiere Pro's timeline scrubbing experience, snappiness with the with the UI, for example, clicking on different timelines, generating peak files, doing the visual intelligence. When it came to the first step, which is transcoding, because I like to make proxies no matter what, I just I really find the buttery smooth timeline of using proxies very essential. I found that the M4 Pro was actually twice as fast in generating H.264 proxies and even in ProRes proxies. And that's because the MacBook M4 Pro has a video encoder for both HEVC, H.264 and ProRes codecs. Whereas on the PC, because we have an RTX 3070 and an Intel equipped with QuickSync, we can only encode and decode with hardware H.264 or H.265 HEVC not ProRes. ProRes does use the CPU, albeit it's still a very easy codec to encode. Ultimately, the M4 Pro was twice as fast in both scenarios. And I've tested this on many different types of footage, and you can see in this chart here, it completely destroyed the PC, although the PC was no sl not slow at all. By the way, I made a custom script to help me create proxies very efficiently. I find it a lot better than the one that's included with Creative Cloud. The media encoder, for example, it does parallel processing and it's really smart to not create double proxies and stuff like that. Whereas I found the, the default one that comes with Premiere Pro is very, it's just a bad experience overall. It's very slow, it's serial process, and sometimes it makes mistakes and creates duplicate proxies. So I recommend using that instead. Now, in terms of the timeline experience, I couldn't really see too much of a difference. Perhaps the M4 Pro was slightly a little bit more responsive when I was clicking between different timelines, loading thumbnails and whatnot, but the overall scrubbing experience for my, this test project, which was a very complex project that I had edited for a keyboard, the knock-free mechanical split keyboard, and it ended up being more or less the same. Now that might sound pretty good, but unfortunately I was hoping for the M4 Pro, which you know is a newer device, to be a lot more performant than the PC, but it, that, that really did not become the case. Now for the third thing that you want to do is when you are exporting. With the base M4 Mac Mini, exporting is intolerably slow. I would say it is more than double the slowness of the M4 Pro. When it came versus the PC, the 11th gen PC with an RTX 3070, surprisingly the M4 Pro did pretty well, although it was still slower by one minute for a whole 21 minute export. Now a difference of one minute for a 21 minute export isn't too bad. So I would say they're more or less a tie, but the PC is a little bit faster exporting, that's for sure. When it comes to miscellaneous things like opening Premiere Pro or applying the Time Bolt extension to apply cuts to my clip using my AI video editing script that I created, I do find that the M4 Pro is faster. So all in all, the transcoding is gonna be twice as fast, which is a nice benefit. The most important thing is how does it feel to edit on the timeline? And I would say the PC and the Mac M4 Pro are pretty much neck and neck. That's a tie. And then when it comes to exporting, I would say the PC is a little bit faster. Now here's the thing. Did I wanna continue using the M4 Pro for my main editing machine? I have two PCs in my two office locations and I was debating whether I should unify everything onto the M4 Pro. 
It's a lot of work because I have to remap all the key bindings and all my scripts and plugins and whatnot. Ultimately, I did not end up doing that. And here's the main reason. It's just a little bit of a tiebreaker in my opinion. When I was trying to play the footage that I had edited, the one that I tested on, I did find the M4 Pro to lag substantially more when I was playing at a faster speed. Now, this is a very important editing workflow where the editor would sit and rewatch the entire video multiple times, but you want to watch it at 2x or 4x speed. And what I found was that when I run it at 4x speed using the shuttle speed increase, I did notice a lot of lag. And this is with the proxies off because you're doing your final review. When there was proxies on, obviously there was no issue. And what ended up happening was that there was a crash. And this was really alarming on the M4 Pro. Whereas on the PC with my 11th gen and 10th gen CPUs and RTX 3070, I've never had one crash ever in the past, I don't know, three to four years I've had these PCs. It's never crashed on me. So this is one rare event where it did crash, but I'm really afraid to continue using the M4 Apple MacBook because it might crash in the future and I don't want to lose all my projects. So that insurance of just using the PC with the, you know, obviously the inconvenience of having to switch between the PC and the Mac all the time, because I do primarily code on the Mac environment. It's just a way better experience. And even the base model was more than sufficient for Android, iOS, JavaScript, web development, and all that stuff. So that's my conclusion. Just to wrap it up one more time, transcoding, the M4 Pro wins. It's about twice as fast, which is nice. It's also very quiet and a lot less heat intensive than my PC. Timeline scrubbing performance, ultimately, it was a tie, but then the M4 Pro do, does lose because of that rare event where it crashed. And when it was consistently slow, when it was playing at 4X speed, you know, increased speed on the timeline, it would just feel very laggy. And then it did crash that one time. And then in terms of the export, yes, the M4 Pro is a little bit slower. Definitely the, the PC feels a lot faster. So in the end, if you really want to get the best experience, you probably need to get the Mac Studio and get a max chip. I, I would imagine having doubled the video encoders and decoders, the hardware, and the increased amount of GPU cores, you know, 32 GPU cores is gonna make a substantial difference from a PC that was built three years ago and kind of near a top of line, you know, 2000 USD at that time. Ultimately, I do think you can get better value bang for your buck if you do go with a similarly spec PC. I mean, my PC right now is probably worth only 700 USD pound for pound so versus that of a you know, a more expensive MacBook Pro, which could be like, if you get the M M4 Pro in a Mac mini, it's gonna cost you around maybe 1800 USD. So I do think there's better value in the PC. Now this obviously could be different on different video editors like DaVinci Resolve and whatnot. Final Cut Pro obviously is gonna be more, you know, native Apple Silicon supported, but I will stick to Premiere Pro and PCs for the new future. Thanks for watching. And if you wanna check out my AI editing script that I created. I'll leave a link in the description. It has really helped me create talking head videos on YouTube extremely fast. I'll leave a link in the description. See you in the next video.